down in the center position is 6'7 junior, number 52, Chris Northcross. And the forward slots are filled by number 42, James Bridgewater, a 6'3 sophomore. And Lavelle Blancher, the runner-up to Mr. Basketball this season, the 6'6 senior, wearing number 30. The Pioneers starting two seniors, two juniors and a sophomore. Their front line, 6'3", 6'7", and 6'6". They have good size along the inside. Detroit Denby at 18 and 8 at the one guard tonight for Coach Reuben Washington's team. Number 11, a 6-foot senior, Steve Monroe. At the other guard, number 23, a 6-foot senior, Duran Franklin. Down in the low post, number 55, a 6'6 junior, Nathaniel Wilson, averaging 9.1 points a game and nearly seven boards for this Denby team. The forward slots are filled by number four, Robert Strickland, a 6'4 sophomore, and number 25, Edward Smith, a 6'3 senior. Three seniors, a junior, a sophomore, and Coach Washington starting unit. And the Tars front line, 6'4, 6'6, and 6'3 as we close in on tip-off. Tom, look for another great game between these two teams. You realize that we saw a good A game. We're going to see another one right here. These two teams close to each other. You never know what's going to happen, but anticipate a great game. The Denby team, the visitors on the board wearing the navy blue with a gold trim. Pioneer, the home team, with a white trimmed in the black and a little bit of purple. Got the all-black warm-ups. As they close out the introductions down stairs at center court. Eight minutes up on that first quarter clock as Detroit Denby and Pioneer get set to tangle here. Pioneer's four losses, third game of the season to East Lansing, 89-84. Fifth game of the year to Pershing, 69-59. Middle of the season, a big loss against Toledo St. John's from Ohio, 74-44, and then late in the year to Adrian, 68-53. Denby's losses coming to Detroit, Osborne, Cast Tech, Clarkston, Pershing, Northern, Pershing again late in the season, King, and Detroit Mumford. The eight losses for the uh, Navy Blue and Gold of Detroit Denby. Both teams coming to the mid-court circle. That big orange basketball with the green and white S down there. And we're at the home of the Final Four Michigan State Spartans. And a lot of the fans from the first game, Tom, have not left. They want to stick around and watch some of this contest as well. And coming up at 3 o'clock, don't forget that this Sunday, you can hear Michigan State NCAA playoff action. The Final Four exclusively on the sports fan WVFN East Lansing. That's the hockey playoffs coming up. One step away from the final four, Ron Mason's Spartans. The tip won by Pioneer. They quickly work it down low to James Bridgewater, who lays it up, kisses the glass, and it's 2-0 Pioneer. An early bucket on the opening possession off the tip for the team in white. Right corner, three-pointer rims off for Robert Strickland. Fight for the loose ball rebound. It's out of bounds and last touched by Nathaniel Wilson. It'll go over to Ann Arbor Pioneer. Pioneers looking very strong. Their first possession downtown. They got a really good look at the basket. Able to elevate for that nice shot. Breaking man-to-man -man pressure into the front court. Garrett Quinn for this Ann Arbor team. Mid post left outside the lane. Working hard. Down low is Garrett Quinn. That's Blanchard, excuse me, got the contact, and the initial foul on either squad will go against Denby. And that is going to be put on to Robert Strickland, the 6'4 sophomore, his first team first. Amazes me how many underclassmen we've seen in the starting lineups throughout the tournament thus far in the final four round. First free throw for Blanchard, kicks off no good. That's, that says one of two things to me. Either A, some of the seniors aren't coming out for whatever reason, Second of all, with all these sophomores and juniors starting now, over the next year and two years, these teams are going to be just as good as what we're seeing right now. Second free throw falls for Lavelle Blanchard. A quick 3-0 start for Ann Arbor Pioneer. Baseline left cut off there. Duran Franklin kicks it off right elbow in the paint. No good from 14 feet for Robert Strickland. It's out of bounds. Again, last touched by the Tars of Detroit Denby. 
inbounding against that man-to-man -man pressure. Steve Monroe getting a good look at the face of Garrett Quinn, the guard of Pioneer. Cross courting nearly intercepted there. Monroe, his fingertips just couldn't quite reach it. Garrett Quinn now down low on the left block, putting up strong, short tip up, back and in for Lavelle Blanchard. His first field goal this afternoon. It's 5 0 Ann Arbor Pioneer. Left baseline driving Edward Smith, put it up, got a shot block, stick back. Nathaniel Wilson and the Tars are on the board at the 6 36 mark of the opening quarter. Good offensive rebound and stick back in. He didn't horse around with it as soon as he got it, up strong to get it in. 5 2 Pioneers leading Detroit Denby. Between the rings on top, Blanchard. He can do so much. Spins free throw line short from 14. Rebound right down to the hands into Duran Franklin. Looping down low, Wilson tip, tipped, and finally a push and a foul. It's a tough call there, I think, on Denby. It's going to go against Wilson. Looked like both men had equal position, but uh, Wilson will get his first and the team second on Denby. Also the first turnover, Tom. Charge that to the Tars. 6.06, clock rolling in the first, 5-2 Ann Arbor Pioneer. Three-point lead in the Rock. Two minutes into this one, Blanchard, top side left, long range, three, and connects. Boy, Lavelle Blanchard has come out with six of his team's eight, and it is 8-2 Pioneer by six. And intercepting Garrett Quinn, way ahead off the dish, lays it up off the board, looking for a uh, pass back off the backboard, but missing the jam was Blanchard. And driving the other way. Great look ahead by Monahan. And finally, Denby works it down low. And Nathaniel Wilson has his third and fourth point. He's got all of them for the Tards. It's 8 4. There's a big swing there, four point swing. And a foul coming up on the floor, Tom. I I'm going to disagree with that play down there. I think that was a little bit too early to go for something like that. Yeah, you want to get the crowd into it, but you can score points by a layup. You didn't have to try anything that fancy dancy. Garrett Quinn just got his first initial team foul for Pioneer, stopping the clock with 5.23 on the reach in. Pioneer in for the jam. Blanchard back door cut, and he drilled it. Excuse me, that was the team third on Denby. Foul going the other way and stayed with Pioneer. Steve Monroe getting tagged for that last foul, Tom, for Denby. And here comes the foul coming up on Pioneer. It'll be his their first as a team. This one will go against the Pioneer Club. Chris Northcross. And Nathaniel Wilson with his team down six early, 10-4 at the line. He has all four for Denby. It's really concentration time early in the ball game for this Detroit Denby squad. They've got to maintain their composure because the Pioneers have come out of the gate quick. And Wilson keep him, uh, keeping his team within range. He's got all five as his first, first free throw goes through the netting. Second one spins off no good. Fight for the rebound. Loose and one into the corner by Steve Monroe. Takes the three-pointer in the corner. No good. Rebound position. Another offensive board. Edward Smith. And as he started to go up, he's hit and fouled. Second straight Pioneer foul coming up. That'll go against number 22, Brian Monahan, the point guard, his first. And that'll put to the line Edward Smith, who on the season is averaging 17 points a game, 62% from the free throw line. But his first one hits the front iron, no good. Ann Arbor Pioneer 10, Detroit Denby 5. Five minutes exactly to play in the opening quarter. Second free throw, the rims off. They had four opportunities from the line. That trip down, they missed three of them. Pioneer back the other way, one-handed jam off the baseline left. And that's 42, this time off the bench, Robert Lewis for Pioneer. Or excuse me, 42, uh, James Bridgewater. He's starting forward, he has four. He and Blanchard combining for the 12, down low. Getting it to Edward Smith, he lays it up on the left side with a right hand and in, it's 12-7. Back the other way in transition, finger roll straight down the lane for Brian Monahan. First for the Pioneer guards and it's 14-7. We've got racehorse basketball with 4.20 to play in the first. You say no defense out here so far. Andrew Warren in the lineup. Lights up a three-pointer left wing and hits it. First bench points for either squad, and it's 14-10. Pioneers by four. Blanchard catches baseline left turn and fire from 17, and he got it. Boy, that's 
knowing where you're at on the floor. He got that loose ball on the dish, turned around and fired, and it's 16-10, Pioneer by six. Baseline left, Monroe off the dribble reverse. Snow with the right hand tip up by Nathaniel Wilson. No, another try, off the glass, too strong. Blanchard rips down the defensive carom. Way ahead, but nobody's there. He threw it into the Denby bench, into his front court. Turnover, Pioneer. And their first of the game will get a substitution coming out for Ann Arbor Pioneers. Number 52, Chris Northcross. And checking in is number 33, Jermaine Johnson. He's a 6-1 senior. Denby with it back, trailing by six. Three and a half to play in the first. Off the dribble, nice move to the hole. Finger roll and fill for Steve Monroe. They need this kid to heat up. He is their leading scorer at 20 points a game. That's his first bucket with 3.20 to go in the first. And that was great penetration by the senior six-foot guard. It's 16-12, Pioneer by four. Away from the ball, we've got Whistle. And a foul coming up here on Detroit Denby at the defensive end with 3.13 remaining in the quarter. Robert Strickland getting his second, team fourth. Inbounding Pioneer from the near sideline, right off the hand of the intended target. Garrett Quinn, turnover. Pioneer back the other way. It's loose in transition. Pioneer gobbles it up. Two on none the other way. Blanchard, one-handed tomahawk jam. Blanchard having a huge opening quarter. He's got 12 of the Pioneer, 18, and it's 18-12. After the Detroit Denby turnover, they convert. Nathaniel Wilson taking it to this hole strong, but too strong. Hard off the high glass, no good. Back the other way on the dribble, knocked away from behind by Denby away from Monahan, but into the hands of Lavelle Blanchard. He's hit and fouled, knocked to the floor. And another Denby personal coming up here. The team fifth already with 2.37 to play in the first. Team fifth, that is a dangerous, dangerous place to be so early on. And Mike, that is already the third personal on Robert Strickland. And Detroit Denby is going to have to get someone off the bench and in for that young man, and they will. It's the first free throw for it. Lavelle Blanchard is up and in. He's now two of three from the line here in the first. 19-12. And here come the substitutions. Number 42, Robert Lewis, the 6'4 junior, coming into the lineup. Also a substitution for Ann Arbor Pioneer, number 10, Kelvin Washington. First, second free throw, I should say the back end for Blanchard falls. He hits both and it's 20 to 12. Lavelle Blanchard putting the Pioneers up to an eight-point lead. Baseline right, little half hook, short. For Edward Smith, rebound, Ann Arbor Pioneer into the front court on the dribble. Jermaine Johnson, the senior, out on top, Blanchard for three, no. Two Denby Tars underneath to grab the defensive rebound. Man who came out was the little guy, Steve Monroe with it. Left side on top now, Duran Franklin. Free throw line extended right into the hands of Andrew Warren. Tries baseline, tried to dish it back out. Intercepted there by Brian Monahan. Going to take it the coast to coast, try to lay it up. Left side with the left hand, but that's blocked cleanly out of bounds by Robert Lewis, the 6'4 junior, and it'll stay with Pioneer. And we'll get a substitution both ways. First for the Pioneers. Number 52, Chris Northcross coming back in. And for the Tars, number 21, Dewan Lowe. First look at him, he is a 6'1 junior guard. Monroe checks out for the Tars and getting a breather is Lavelle Blanchard for Pioneer. Off the inbound, they work it. Left corner, three-pointer won't go for Monahan. Offensive rebound, but we've got a three-second violation. Parked in the paint and picking up the ticket for the third turnover on Pioneer here in this quarter. Number 42, James Bridgewater. Back now, the Tars go to the north hoop to our left as we look on the floor, forcing it up in the lane off the dribble. No good, but set right down to the deck. Dijuan Lowe as James Bridgewater hit him and sent him back to the ground. Bridgewater to get his first. And the team third heading to the line for Denby. 
is number 21, as Tom mentioned. Dewan Lowe for the season low, a 54% free throw shooter. Missed the first one badly, second one, that one. He got some help from the iron. Nice touch for Lowe. Splits the pair, and it's a 20 to 13, seven point spread. Pioneer, the lead the basketball with 80 seconds to play in the opening quarter. Left side, spotting up Monahan for three back iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by Lowe. He's going to dribble up to midcourt and then across the timeline himself. Comes top side left. Gives off for Steve Monroe. Back for Lowe. Baseline, no look pass in the paint. Got to get it out in time. Robert Lewis didn't do it. He's called for the three second violation. Turnover. Denby, their fifth of the opening quarter. Seems like when they get down there, Tom, they're just a little unsure of what they want to do. Do they go up for a shot there? Do they kick it back out for a long range jumper? Spinning into the front court. Top of the circle now, 33, Jermaine Johnson. Near steal, they got it to Monahan right wing. Goes baseline that way, pull up running one hand, and no tip up and in for James Bridgewater. He has six of his team's 22. It's 22-13, Pioneer back the other way in transition, missing the lay-in, stick back, 42. No good there for Lewis. Rebound Pioneer, they try to loop it ahead, but it's tipped out of bounds near the free throw line to the baseline by Duran Franklin, who got a hand up in there to deny. It'll stay with Pioneer with 29.7 remaining in the first. Coming back in for Pioneer, Garrett Quinn. Substitutions as well for Detroit Denby. Number 55, Nathaniel Wilson comes back to the lineup. And our first look, or should we say return, for Duran Franklin, number 23. Pioneer inbounds from the baseline. On top near Carey there for Garrett Quinn. Left side in front of the Denby bench for James Bridgewater. 20 seconds left. Pioneer with a nine point lead in the basketball. Now it's Kelvin Washington, the 5'8 senior. Back for Bridgewater, left hash. Off a wicked screen, pick and roll, but North Cross couldn't handle the dish back. Turnover, back the other way, driving, laying it up and in with a strong move to the hole, Andrew Warren. Pioneer won't get a shot off before the quarter sounds. After one of this Class A semifinal, Ann Arbor Pioneer 22, the Tars of Detroit Denby 15. One of your sponsors is Farm Bureau Insurance. This is the MHSAA Championship Network on WVFN The Fan. It's not who you call after, it's who you call before that makes all the difference. Call your Farm Bureau Insurance agent today and be ready for the future. Your Farm Bureau agent will help you with insurance protection for your life, home, auto, farm, business, and retirement. You can't predict the future, but you can make the future more predictable. Make that call to your Farm Bureau agent today. Farm Bureau Insurance, making your future more predictable. Want to get in the best shape of your life? Then call 1-800-GO-GUARD. You can be stronger, faster, and healthier than ever before. Want to earn money for college? Then call 1-800-GO-GUARD. You can earn more than $21,000 for college. Want to join a winning team? Then call 1-800-GO-GUARD. You can be part of a team built on camaraderie and respect. Want to serve your community? Then call 1-800-GO-GUARD. You can be ready by training one weekend a month and two weeks a year. Want to have it all? Then call 1-800-GO-GUARD. You can enjoy all the benefits of serving part-time while working or going to school full-time. Want to do something special with your life? Then call 1-800-GO-GUARD. That's 1-800-GO-GUARD. the Army National Guard, you can. Sponsored by the Michigan National Guard. Aired by the Michigan Association of Broadcasters on this station. Along with engineer Jeff Hager, Tom Duke, Mike Stiles back at the Breslin Center. After one quarter, Ann Arbor Pioneer 22, the Tars of Detroit Denby 15. 14 points for the man, Lavelle Blanchard. Doing just an outstanding job. Three of four from the free throw line and hitting some key buckets both inside and outside. A couple of big jams as well. Bringing the Pioneer crowd and some of the other faithful in attendance today to their feet with quite a show in that opening eight minutes. They'll put eight minutes back up on the board as we get set to start the second quarter. It'll be Detroit Denby's ball. Duran Franklin will inbound at midcourt down below us. 
Slaps that basketball and bounces into the backcourt there for teammate Steve Monroe. Back for Franklin now into the forecourt on the dribble. Dishes topside left for Monroe. Goes one way, the other way. A bump and a foul coming up here. 33, Jermaine Johnson got a little clue, too close for comfort that time. It'll cost him a personal on his ledger. His first team fourth. So the Pioneers still have a few to go before they're in a bonus situation. 13 seconds into the second. 22-15. Pioneer remain. It's up by seven. Franklin off the inbound. Left wing outside the arc. Left elbow there. Edward Smith on the bounce pass. Smith looking cross court. Swing pass. Andrew Warren. Going to launch a three. Off the glass and in. That'll work. Warren has eight off the bench, including a pair of triples, and it's 22-18. You wouldn't expect it. This guy, 5'8", junior out there, more known for his ball handling skill, Tom, and his defense. When you get a shot like that, whether you're a fan of the team or not, you've got to love it. Tell you what, Kelvin Washington just got away with a walk at the top of the key for Pioneer. Ann Arbor maintains possession. Opening minute, second quarter. Washington has a back drive into the lane. Partially tipped, but it still went through the netting. Tell you what, Nathaniel Wilson did all he could, but Washington credited him with the two points. First bench points for Pioneer, and it's 24-18. Dishing in the lane nicely to Nathaniel Wilson on the pass from Warren. No good, couldn't convert. Rebound Blanchard way ahead at midcourt on the dish to Johnson. Down low, other side of the lane, turn and fire short for Chris Northcross. Rebound Denby, back come the Tars, trailing by half a dozen, six and a half to play in the half. Franklin comes over near side and a reach in call coming up here on Pioneers, Kelvin Washington. His first. His first team fifth. And Tom, right down there, a prime example of why Blanchard was so high in the Mr. Basketball voting. He does so many of the little intangibles. Goes up for rebound, grabs it, holds it, brings it down, scouts out, and then moves forward. Your steal, and it did force a turnover. Garrett Quinn as. Andrew Warren lost control of a turnover. Detroit Denby, Pioneer with it back now. Driving down the lane, running two-hander, and it's in for Garrett Quinn. His first points this afternoon, and it's 26-18. Pioneers back by eight again. Deep left wing Warren back out on top that way for Franklin. Back for Warren, left side. Behind the arc, driving in. Got a shot blocked by Blanchard. It's loose out on top, controlled there by Chris Northcross. Big man leading a three-on-one break. Again, they try the oop off the window, but uh, he missed the shot. Followed, though, did North Cross. This time, contact, and it then be foul. It's the second time that one of the Pioneer guards have tried to uh, set up a teammate in transition with a little soft toss off the glass, and for the second time, it did not work. Didn't work. That is the first foul, though. For the Tars on number 25, Edward Smith, sixth team foul. That shot up strong and missed. I should say credit the uh, follow-up to Blanchard, who's at the line. He misses the first. Out of the lineup is Kelvin Washington. Also checking in for Denby, number five, Brian Ellis, a 5-5 freshman. Blanchard hits the back end, splits the pair. Four of six from the line. He's got all of the attempts here in the first half for Pioneer. They lead by nine, 27 18. Duan Lowe, right corner. Three point attempt. No good there for little Andrew Warren. Offensive rebound, though. Kick it back out on top line. Drive three. That was flat. It's for Steve Monroe. Another offensive rebound. Denby high off the glass. Running one hand. Aaron, Andrew Warren. He has 10 and a half to lead his team off the bench, and it's 27-20, the lead cut to seven. And again, that nice shot high off the glass, dropped straight down and in. Right wing Bridgewater who just came into the lineup. Three-pointer topside right, off the iron for Monaghan, rebound. The Denby Tars will let it go out of bounds, and it's last touched by Blanchard on the weak side. In the corner there, near the baseline, five minutes exactly to play first half. Pioneer 27, Denby 20. The winner meets Saginaw Arthur Hill in the championship game tomorrow afternoon. High stepping in the lane and dishing after drawing the double team. Nice move in there, the paint for Lowe, who found his target, Eddie Smith. 
He's got points three and four, and it's 27-22. The Tars with four straight. Right wing Bridgewater taking his man off the dribble. Contact down low, threw it up. A fade from four on the right block, no good. Rebound, Denby's low. Outlets now for Brian Ellis. Down low again, offensive foul. Missing the shot anyway was low. Dewan low. A turnover on Detroit Denby. And Lowe picks up his first of the afternoon. That is number eight turnover-wise for Denby and team foul number seven. And a 20-second timeout is called by Pioneer. With 4.18 to play in the first half, 27-22. One thing you say about Denby, Mike, midway now through this second quarter, they're doing a better job of getting a body on Lavelle Blanchard. They're doing a lot better job, and they're getting a better job of rotating somebody down low to set themselves up for offensive and defensive rebounds. But that's the main concern, stopping Lavelle Blanchard. And it took them a quarter to figure it out, but they've done a great job since then. He's only scored one more point. Pioneer out of the 20-second timeout. The first timeout called by either team midway through the second quarter of this ball game. Inbound against full court man-to-man -man pressure. Off the dribble, Brian Monahan into the front court now for the Pioneers. Alley oop, Blanchard on the run, put it up in midair, missed everything, but uh, a little bit of the glass that time. Denby quickly the other way, Franklin. Started to drive now across the lane. Down low, Eddie Smith put it up too strong. Loose, trying to save it, Franklin, but it's out of bounds. He can't get there in time. It'll go back over to Pioneer with 3.53 left in the half. And a Pioneer substitution coming in is number 14. Our first look at Tobias McClure, a 5'11 senior. He comes in for the big man, Chris Northcross, the 6'7 junior. A little bit of quickness in there right now for Pioneer with that five-point lead. Breaking pressure all the way down on the dribble. Monahan tried to loop it up in the air again, but Pioneer can't convert. And it bounces out, and it will belong to Detroit Denby. Looks like Denby's trying to rush things a little bit, or should we say Pioneer is being rushed by Denby's defense into taking some quicker shots than what they did in the first quarter time, and that's really throwing the Pioneers out of some rhythm. Offensive interference there, giving the ball to Denby after a miss, down low, turn and fire, offensive rebound, stick back for Smith, no good, rebound. Pioneer, both teams have gone cold now at the offensive end. Jermaine Johnson kicked it inside, back out for Johnson. Short off the front iron with his three-point attempt. Position for Denby, over the back, Pioneer. The sixth team foul of the first half coming up on Ann Arbor Pioneer. That'll be against number 14, Tobias McClure, just his first. Ruben Washington, the head coach for Detroit Denby, applauding his team and their efforts here in the second quarter. They were down nine moments ago. They've sliced the lead to five, and they've got the rock now. Breaking pressure into the front court, taking a strong to the hole, but walking with it. Denby's a little guard down there. Thought that he had a uh, lane to the hole that time and did, but he turns it over. That's Andrew Warren into the front court. Pioneer, Blanchard nearly walks, spins in the lane, fires it up from nine and drops it through. That kid can take him inside, he can take him outside. That's what makes him so dangerous. It's 29-22 Pioneer. Well, that was his first field goal since about the two minute mark, Tom, of the first quarter, so it's been close to a minute and a charge coming up against Denby. Edward Smith, but I'll tell you what, setting up and taking that charge all the way. There was no doubt about that one as 42, James Bridgewater, just let Eddie Smith come to him, and boy, oh boy, did he indeed. That is the 10th turnover now unofficially for the Tars of Detroit Denby here in the first half. Coming out after his second personal in the team. Eight, but a, a player control foul. Denby wants a timeout. This is a full 248 to play first half. Ann Arbor Pioneer 29, Detroit Denby 22. One of your sponsors is Farm Bureau Insurance. This is the MHSAA Championship Network on WVFN The Fan. Eating before competition will stave off hunger and help prevent low blood sugar, which can cause dizziness, fatigue, blurred vision, and confusion. Some athletes can tolerate only liquids before events. Others swear by particular foods like cereal with milk and a banana. 
To discover what works best for you, sample different foods before practice sessions early in the season. This message brought to you by the United Dairy Industry of Michigan, proud sponsor of the Michigan High School Athletic Association Sports Nutrition Award Program. You can't predict what the future holds, but you can make your future more predictable. Just call your Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau agents all over Michigan are helping families build college funds, lifetime retirement incomes, and more secure futures. Remember, it's not who you call after, it's who you call before that makes all the difference. Call your Farm Bureau insurance agent today. Farm Bureau Insurance, making your future more predictable. Two minutes, 48 seconds to play in the first half. Pioneer by 7, 29, 22 over Denby. Some great times going on out there, Tom, but unfortunately Denby having some difficulty here the last couple of minutes of getting some good look baskets like they were doing earlier on in the second. The Pioneer defense starting to clamp down just a little bit more than what they were at the start of this quarter. Monahan in the backcourt now dribbles across the timeline, looping down low, catching there as Bridgewater against a triple team, quadruple team, knocked away, taken away. Duran Franklin comes up with a loose ball. Pioneer gives it up, turnover number five of the half. Down low, Nathaniel Wilson put it up. Boy, a lot of basketball down there, but a Pioneer foul coming up as well. Uh, number 14, Tobias McClure, his second off the bench. And the team seven, so a one and one situation now for both teams with the shots at seven, or the fouls at seven, but you're correct, Tom. This should be a two-shot foul. First one up and short for Nathaniel Wilson. He's one of three now from the line. Checking in for Denby, number 22, Jimmy Early, a 5'8 sophomore, and coming back in for the Pioneers, number 32, Garrett Quinn. Jermaine Johnson takes a seat. Denby not helping their cause from the charity stripe in the first half. They're just two of six, 33%. Second one, that's on its way and good. Wilson leads his team, the starters anyway, with six. And a grab in the front court as Pioneer got it across the timeline. Tobias McClure is hit and fouled by Andrew Warren. His first. Number nine is a team now on Pioneer with 2.22 left in the second. McClure looks for his first points of the ball game. The right hander has it on its way and he gets the bonus. Ann Arbor Pioneer 30, Denby 23. The lead back to seven again. Tars need to be careful here in the final 2.20 of this half. They continue to trail by seven, missing the second. Nathaniel Wilson rips down the defensive rebound. Hands in the backcourt for Franklin. Dishes, top side left three-pointer, Andrew Warren off the mark. Tipped up and controlled by Tobias McClure. Reach-in foul coming up here. Andrew Warren just got his second in the team 10th. Two shots now. As the little guy is... Got his second personal, coming off the bench with 10 points. However, the fouls making up for what he's been doing offensively. 2.08 remaining, first half. The Class B semifinals coming up later this afternoon. Coldwater gets Sheboygan in the first game as the first free throw is up and in for McClure, who is right back at the stripe again. 31-23, Pioneers by eight. Spins it in his hand, it's on its way. Back iron, no good. Fight for the rebound, tipped once, twice. Back to Blanchard, open down low, fouled from behind by Duran Franklin. Blanchard, right place at the right time. Nothing else to say but that. And back at the stripe will go Pioneer. Franklin just his first, but the free throw shooting has just been horrendous here, Tom, for both teams. As you said, Detroit Denby, two of six in the first quarter. Three of four in the first for Ann Arbor Pioneer. Currently, they're three of six in the second quarter alone. Pioneer can put a big time hurt on Denby late in this quarter, but they continue to struggle at the free throw line themselves, this stanza, as Blanchard comes up empty on his first attempt. Substitution in for Denby, number 25. Edward Smith back into the lineup. Jimmy Early heads back to take a seat. 
next to head coach Ruben Washington. Second one, that one will count for Blanchard. He had 14 in the first quarter, four more so far in the second. 18 of his team's 32. They lead by 9, 32, 23. Wraparound pass, but a walk beforehand. A little too fancy that time for Steve Monroe. Had the right idea, but took an extra step to get it done. Just one more extra step is a, a no-no in this game, unfortunately. Denby turns it over for the fifth time this quarter, 11th time in the half. Reversing underneath, high off the window, and in for James Bridgewater. That was a pretty move. His first two of the second, eight and a half, and it's 34-23. Pioneer has the biggest lead of the half. It's 11 with a minute 35 remaining in the second. Looping down low, open there, got free behind the defense, Edward Smith, and he jams it home two-handed. Substitution coming up for Denby Tom at the next whistle. Spinning center of the court across the timeline, Garrett Quinn. Knocked away, got it back, left elbow. For Blanchard, behind him for three, back iron, high off that rim, no good. Rebound, Eddie Smith for Warren, and now into the hands of his teammate. They try to go left side for Monroe, tip stolen away. McClure, after the steal, leading the break, tried to dish it to the trailing Brian Monahan. He's hit hard from behind and fouled after yet another Denby turnover. 59.6 seconds remaining. Andrew Warren just picked up his third. Denby already over the limit and have been for some time. First one short for McClure. Or excuse me, for 22, Brian Monahan. Now we'll get the substitution for Denby. Brian Ellis, the 5'9 freshman, coming back in. Steve Monroe checks out. 34-25, Pioneer by nine. Monahan with a second. And now the lead is 10, double figures again. 59.6 seconds remaining in the half. Denby gets it inbounded. One, two, two, three quarter court trap right now for Pioneer. Looping in, knocking it out of bounds. Great hustle by Lavelle Blanchard. Goes into press row there near midcourt. Near sideline, it'll stay with Denby with 51.8 remaining in the half. And another Denby substitution. Did he get to the scores table in time? He did. That is number 11, Steve Monroe, their leading scorer, who's really been held in check time. Matter of fact, he's had to sit for the last few minutes, hopefully to keep him fresh and maybe get him going here in the second half. Franklin checks out. Duran Franklin for Denby. Inbounding, Monroe. Double team quickly is Brian Ellis. Get it back on the hands, driving left side, short with his finger roll. Steve Monroe, rebound. Blanchard behind his back in the backcourt. Now dribbles across the timeline. Head fake. Quinn spinning in the lane, straight away from the bucket, but he walks with the basketball. Turnover number six, just the second of the quarter for the Pioneers. 35.1 left in the half. The Tars would like a bucket here. Get some momentum headed underneath to their locker room. The winner again gets Saginaw Arthur Hill at 173-63 in the first game over Pontiac Northern's Huskies. Game that was tight through three and a half for rally, uh, two and a half quarters. Running two-hander, no good for Warren. Way ahead after the rebound, Pioneer Blanchard backs out now for three right wing. No good offensive rebound. Pulled out of the pack on the weak side by Garrett Quinn. Down to seven seconds. Quinn spins, left hash, picks up the dribble to Monahan with three. Right wing, McClure, a triple on its way, and in as the horn sounds. How about that for ball movement for Ann Arbor? Pioneer, Tobias McClure, his first field goal, and we've reached halftime of this Class A semifinal game. Ann Arbor, Pioneer 38, Detroit Denby 25. This is the MHSAA Championship Network on WVFN The Fan. The first rule of school sports is that students must earn the privilege of wearing their school's uniform by taking classes there. But some politicians in Lansing would like students enrolled at other schools to be on your school's teams, even though they are not enrolled at your school. Contact your local state representative or senator and let them know that your school's teams are for the kids attending your school. The kids who get their uniforms the old-fashioned way, they earn it. A message from the Michigan High School Athletic Association. You can't predict what the future holds, but you can make your future more predictable. Just call your Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau agents all over Michigan are helping families build college funds. 
lifetime retirement incomes, and more secure futures. Remember, it's not who you call after, it's who you call before that makes all the difference. Call your Farm Bureau insurance agent today. Farm Bureau Insurance, making your future more predictable. Bilbo's Pizza in a Pan is the pizza voted best in East Lansing. Located in the Ann Street Plaza across from the Marriott, Bilbo's is only five minutes from the Breslin Center. We specialize in pan-style, screen-baked, and stuffed pizza with a large variety of toppings. There's also a nice selection of pasta dishes, a long list of deli sandwiches and subs, Bilbo's unique and special house salad, as well as a number of appetizers. And for those of you attending the games this weekend at the Breslin, there's a coupon in your program and a map of how to get to our restaurant. Bilbo's, it's an MSU tradition for over 20 years. Maybe you didn't get a chance to see the games today at the Breslin Center. Not to worry, because you can catch all the highlights on the March Magic Recap at 1030 Thursday, Friday, and Saturday on WSYM Fox 47 in Lansing. Fans can follow their favorite boys basketball team and find out not only what happened today, but also what still lies ahead in the quest for the 1999 MHSAA Championship. So don't miss the March Magic Recap at 1030 tonight on WSYM Fox 47. Halftime of the second Class A semifinal for boys basketball here in 1999. Welcome back to the Breslin Center. Tom Duke with you. 22-15 Ann Arbor Pioneer led by seven after one quarter. Then they outscored the Tars of Detroit Denby 16-10 in the second stanza. And behind 18 points from Lavelle Blanchard, they're up 13 at halftime. 38 to 25 and at halftime we're pleased to be joined by Gina Mazzolini an assistant director with the Michigan High School Athletic Association to chat a little bit about foreign exchange students and their participation in high school sports and I know personally from all the games we do at a local level Gina that there seems to be a lot more participation from the foreign exchange students than there used to be. Is that right you've noticed that? Definitely so. Well you know we uh, surveyed our member schools last year and it's we, they said we had a, about 890 some students and about 500 participated. Well, then when the national office sent us how many students they had in, in Michigan, they had about a thousand more than we, than our school said we have. So, yeah, the foreign the national foreign exchange office CSIET said we've had 1,800 kids um, in our schools. So. Um, that's quite a high number, and if it's the same, then we probably had about a thousand of those kids participating. Now our notes tell us that this process is tightly regulated. Tell us a little bit about the national group you work with that oversees this foreign exchange yeah. program. They have an uh, evaluation committee, accreditation committee, a due process committee, and then a board of control. And each program every year has to apply to be on their advisory list. And it's it, it, the first year, the fourth year, and seventh year of the program, they have to fit the entire, there are nine standards. They have to submit all nine standards, and they have to meet the national level. And in the interim years, they just send two or three standards. And so the committee will evaluate all the programs, make sure what they're doing from training host families, training local area rep representatives and school and student orientation. And, is, and the most important thing that they take care of the kids once they get them over here. And once they are here and they're enrolled in the school, how long before it takes, the process does it take before they can start playing, and then how long are they eligible? Well, actually, they are. It's, it's an exception in our rule. They are eligible immediately. If a student comes over and they're on one of the enlisted approved programs and their host family lives within the service area of the school, they can be eligible immediately. But it's a two-year, two, I'm sorry, two-semester. So if they start in August, they're immediately eligible for the fall semester, spring semester. Now, if they choose to come back, they've already used up their eligibility. And they don't get extra semesters just because they do get the immediate eligibility. Are you finding that uh, schools are encouraging this more and more with the athletes coming over, not just for the studies? We well, you know sometimes we'd like to think since we are now more globally, you know, involved and with other people they want you know our kids will be completing glo globally with these type of people so they want the exposure but invariably there is somebody that has an eye on an exceptional athlete that wants to bring them over we also hear rumors that sometimes college coaches find somebody that they want and they want to bring them over here so they can get you know for their senior year or a last year so they can get in-state tuition I think the majority of kids that are over here are over here for all the right reasons. It's a good exchange from both ends of it, but invariably there will be some people that are here that probably are here for the wrong reasons or somebody got them here and it wasn't quite as a random selection 
at, for placement as maybe it should have been. It's never going to be perfect, you Th know that. Right, and you know, we do track it down. We've had some kids in the past that we felt they were placed, a direct placement as opposed to random, and, and then we made them sit out the sport that they were, if you will, recruited for. So, well, Gene, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for coming Tom, up and good luck. thanks so much. Good luck through the weekend. With the Ford Exchange Program. Thank you. Gina Mazzolini, an assistant director with the Michigan High School Athletic Association. We're at halftime. Ann Arbor Pioneer leading Detroit Denby 38 to 25. This is the MHSAA Championship Network on WVFN The Fan. The Sports Nutrition Award Program is now open to all 24 Michigan High School Athletic Association sponsored sports. The program encourages healthy eating as part of a training program. A winner will be selected for each of the 24 sports to receive a $1,000 grant to enhance the winning team's program. A $500 scholarship will be provided to a nominated athlete from each winning team. Improve athletic performance through good nutrition while competing in the award requirements. Talk to your coach and get your team to participate. This message brought to you by the MHSAA and United Dairy Industry of Michigan. Bilbo's Pizza in a Pan is the pizza voted best in East Lansing. Located in the Ann Street Plaza across from the Marriott, Bilbo's is only five minutes from the Breslin Center. We specialize in pan-style, screen-baked, and stuffed pizza with a large variety of toppings. There's also a nice selection of pasta dishes, a long list of deli sandwiches and subs, Bilbo's unique and special house salad, as well as a number of appetizers. And for those of you attending the games this weekend at the Breslin, there's a coupon in your program and a map of how to get to our restaurant. Bilbo's, it's an MSU tradition for over 20 years. When it comes to high school sports in Michigan, nobody brings you better coverage than the Detroit Free Press. Every Thursday during the school year, be sure to check out the Preps Extra section of the Free Press. There you'll find the talents of writers Mick McCabe and Bill Roos. Together, they've covered the Michigan high school sports scene for more than 30 years. And this weekend at the Breslin Center, be sure to pick up a special edition of the Free Press free of charge and follow your favorite boys basketball team in their quest for a state championship. The Detroit Free Press, a corporate partner of the Michigan High School Athletic Association. Lansing Community College has been serving the area's educational needs since 1957. With our popular virtual college, the expansion of the Star Institute, and the continuation of MARC, our unique mobile admissions, registration, and counseling team, Lansing Community College is where success begins. Call 1-800-644-4LCC today. LCC, where success begins. Denby and Pioneer return to the floor here at halftime. Mike Stiles, this Denby club has some uh, answering to do, not only on the floor, but in the scorebook in the second half. They've got a lot of work to do, Tom. Their leading scorer is off the bench, Andrew Warren with 10. Six each for Edward Smith and Nathaniel Wilson. Two for Steve Monroe, one for Dewan Lowe. What's really hurting them is the free throws. They're three of eight in the game, one of two in the second quarter. They were two of six in the first and the turnover's not helping out a bit as all. Ann Arbor Pioneer doing a little bit better job. They're eight of 14 from the line. They went five of 10 in that second quarter. Balance scoring somewhat. You take out Laval Blanchard, he has 18, and then after that it gets a little bit more normal. James Bridgewater with eight. Five off the bench for Tobias McClure. Two for Kelvin Washington. Two also for Garrett Quinn, and three for Brian Monahan. So the activity is there, it's just that Denby doesn't really seem to be getting into a, a consecutive flow. They'll get a couple points, then they'll go scoreless for a while. They'll get a couple points, go scoreless for a while. Pioneer shooting 45% compared to Denby's 31% in that opening half again. One of your sponsors today is Farm Bureau Insurance. This is the MHSAA Championship Network on WVFN The Fan. Athletes, food is not your enemy. You need to eat. First, you need some calories just to remain alive. Then you need calories for daily activities, school, chores, hanging out with friends. Finally, you need calories for practice and competition. Cut back on foods that are high in fat and low in vitamins and minerals. To power performance, choose most of your training foods from the five food groups, including three or four daily servings from the milk group. This message brought to you by the United Dairy Industry of Michigan, proud sponsor of the Michigan High School Athletic Association Sports Nutrition Award Program. Lansing Community College has been serving the area's educational needs since 1957. With more than 160 degree and certificate programs, weekend and evening classes, and the same affordable tuition rates that you've come to expect, LCC is where your success begins. Call 1-800-644-4LCC for more information. LCC, where success begins.
Along with engineer Jeff Hager, Tom Duke, Mike Stiles getting ready to start the third quarter of this Class A state semifinal game here in 1999. Coming up later this evening, the Class B semis. At 6 o'clock, Sheboygan tips against once beaten Coldwater. The Cardinals 24 and 1. And in the nightcap, River Rouge at 24 and 2, the defending B champions against the Hastings Saxons at 18 and 8. That one will tip at approximately 7.50 or about 20, 25 minutes following that cold water Sheboygan contest. It is Pioneers basketball to start the third quarter. They dim some of the house lights here and we get ready for action as uh, Pioneer will shoot at the north hoop. Denby when they get it at the south left to right across your radio dial. Pioneer inbounds it, taking it strong off the dribble. Monahan to the hole, knocked away and out of bounds off Denby. Lavelle Blanchard will trigger baseline right for the Pioneers. Looking across the lane, cutting wide open to the hole, laying it up easy, uncontested and in is Brian Monahan, and the lead is 15 for Pioneer, their biggest of the day. Nice move right down low by Monahan, able to get the good feed in from Blanchard. Being 6'6 six, six and inbounding like that, you get a chance to see the whole floor and get a different perspective. Monroe slicing and dicing down the lane, put it up. It's well short, but he drew contact and a pioneer foul at the 734 mark of the third. It's against number 52, Chris Northcross. That's his second team first here of the third quarter. And Denby, you said it, Mike, with the halftime stats, they've got to do a better job of the line if they can get there in the second half. And they're there early here in the third. The first one rattles out no good for Steve Monroe on his first appearance at the line. For the season, Denby shot 62% from the line time. That is just horrendous shooting. And you realize, yes, they are high school students, and yes, they're not professionals, but still, you've got to do a better job than that. And Monroe does. He hit the back end. He must have heard you from here in the middle level. How could he not hear me? My voice carries so well. 40 to 26, trying to bounce down low, but intercepting is Denby. Ill-advised pass for Bridgewater and laying it up and in is Eddie Smith. He's got eight now, three straight for the Tars, and they cut the Pioneer lead to a dozen, 40 to 28. Into the front court now, Blanchard handles, left of the lane, put it up, ran over the defender, offensive foul, Lavelle Blanchard as Eddie Smith stood his ground and took the charge. It's a Pioneer turnover. And the first on Blanchard, second on the Pioneers here in the third quarter. We've hit the seven minute mark and inside it here in the third quarter. Three straight for the Tars. They've got the ball back, trailing by a dozen. Bounce pass, left corner, driving baseline, running two-hander. Tough shot there, and Andrew Warren, who starts the second half, missed it. Rebound, North Cross ahead. Driving is Quinn, put it up and down. Saw the lane, took advantage of it to the hole, off the glass and in. Franklin pushes it up on the dribble, left wing, deep left wing, it's an air ball there. Second straight miss for Andrew Warren, inside and outside, rebound, and then way ahead, Pioneer pushes it. Down low on the right block, missing the shot was Monahan. Tip, tip once, twice, and controlled by Edward Smith. Back come the tri uh, Tars down by 14. Taking it strong to the hole, left side and in off the glass, Steve Monroe. Nobody there to contest that, Tom. Monroe got it across half court, got to the three-point line, decided a little burst of speed. Boom, he was around the defenders, and right there on the baseline, easy for the layup. Reach in and a steal, Steve Monroe back the other way. Three on two, break, the Tars putting it up strong. No, Eddie Smith, contact, Pioneer foul, the team third here early in the second half. Both teams doing a little bit... Uh, North Cross will get it. That's his third, the starting center of Pioneer. Both teams might a little bit lazy getting down the floor right now. Well, I think it took a lot out of them there in that first and second quarter time. They were moving up the floor very, very quickly, and that burns your energy faster than you would if you play a normal, bring it up at your own kind of tempo. Substitutions in for Denby, number 21, Dewan Low, and also checking in for the Pioneers. Number 24, it looks like Jamie Burr, or is that 14? No, it's 14, Tobias McClure. North Cross checks out for Pioneer. First free throw made for Smith, but then he missed the back end. Rebound, Pioneer, they want to run. Pulling up left wing for three, short. Bricked it off the front iron. Uh, Garrett Quinn, position on the defensive glass. Edward Smith, he's bumped from behind by the man that shot the three-pointer. 
Garrett Quinn. He'll get his second, and already now the team fourth. That is the first on Quinn, team fourth. So now the foul situation starting to favor the Denby Tars just a little bit. And Pioneer sensing that, a little momentum swing. They want a timeout at 20 with 546 remaining in the third quarter, 42-31 Pioneer by 11. One of the programs sponsored by the Michigan High School Athletic Association, which truly underscores the value of educational athletics, is the Scholar Athlete Award, sponsored by Farm Bureau Insurance. Over 2,700 applications were received this year for the 24 $1,000 college scholarships, which will be presented. Joe Begarek of Saugatuck High School was named this year's recipient in boys basketball. Students interested in applying for the Scholar Athlete Award for the 1999-2000 school year should contact their high school principal for more information. Both the 20-second timeouts are gone for Coach Brian Townsend and the Pioneers. Denby inbounding, bringing it up against full court man-to-man -man pressure. Top side right. DeJuan Lowe's in the line. Oh boy, he knifed his way down the right side of the lane, threw it off the glass and in. What a nice move. Spun one way, back the other way, and as you said, Tom, right through the heart of the Pioneer defense. 42-33 and a steal from behind. Coming up with a loose ball, Edward Smith. Boy, he's been everywhere so far in the first three and 40 of the second half between his legs. Franklin dishing free throw line extended right for Lowe. Driving in the lane, pull up, dotted line, jumper, got it to go. Lowe with four straight. And we've got a seven point game. Pioneer 42, Denby 35, full court pressure. Deployed here by the Tars and now they'll back off into their half court man to man with 450 remaining in the third. I say time, you keep up with that man to man defense, that full pressure is putting a lot of throws into the Pioneer offense. Monahan plays catch, now they go right wing to James Bridgewater for Monahan again. Left wing, open, McClure lines up a three pointer, a little bit long. Tipped up once, twice, Blanchard in the middle of the pile. Fight for another rebound. And getting tied up, Blanchard and Duran Franklin. Possession arrow, gonna give it to Denby with 4.33 remaining in the third. It is Detroit Denby on a nice little run here in the last two minutes. And a turnover, if you will, for Pioneer. That is now their 11th in the game. Looping pass tipped out of bounds by Tobias McClure, it will stay with Denby. 4-24, left in the third. Pioneer by seven, and a Denby substitution. Checking back in, number five, Brian Ellis, the 5-5 freshman. A lot of coaches, I think, would be afraid to put a freshman in to a game like this. Evidently, that's not the case with Reuben Washington. He's got the confidence in his players that he can put anybody in at any time. Durant Franklin checks out, down low, up, no good for Wilson, tip up. On the foul, uh-uh, Lavelle Blanchard finally grabs the defensive rebound. Pioneer back into the forecourt. Spinning with it, Johnson pulls up free throw line on the dribble. Now it's Monahan, left corner, McClure back for Monahan. McClure again, left side, trying to bounce it down low for Bridgewater, stepping in to steal. And then Monroe taking it the other way, strong to the hole, no, but contact on the dribble drive. And a foul on McClure after the Pioneer turnover. Denby takes advantage and they'll go to the line for two shots. That is the fifth team foul in just a little over half of this third quarter, Tom. No foul so far called on Detroit Denby. And going to the line, as you said, Steve Monroe. It's the third foul on McClure. First free throw short off the front iron. No good for Steve Monroe. Monroe, a 72% free throw shooter for the season, uh, season, excuse me, and checking back in for Detroit Denby was Jimmy Early. Here's the second for Monroe. That one's good. Monroe splits the pair, 42 36. 42 36, six point lead and a blocking call in the backcourt. Foul on Jimmy Early who got there a little too soon and gets his first foul of the afternoon. Also team first on the Tars here in the second half. Pioneers got to try to start getting it into the hands again of Lavelle Blanchard. He has not touched the ball a whole lot here in the second half thus far. 
Driving left side on the dribble, Monahan curls back now. There's Blanchard, put it up, and just a little bit short, but got the contact, and it's Nathaniel Wilson foul, the 235-pound 6'6 junior. That is the second on Nathaniel Wilson, second on the team. Blanchard at the line for a couple here with 337 remaining in the quarter. Blanchard with 18 in the first has been held scoreless so far in the third quarter. And as soon as I say that, he drains the first. No longer. Give him 19 on the afternoon. And a Denby substitution. Uh, Franklin back into Ron Franklin and checking out Jimmy Early. And another Tars foul, uh, substitution I should say, coming up after this foul shot. And he'll get in because Blanchard sinks the second and it's 44-36 Pioneer by eight. Warren in, low out for Coach Ruben Washington's Tars. Their mini run has ended. Well, they drive all the way down, putting it up a little too strong and flat that time for Eddie Smith. Stick back, Nathaniel Wilson. His first two of the second half, give him eight on the afternoon, and it's 44-38, three and 20 clock ticking in the third. Good position right there, Tom, for Wilson. Able to follow the ball, get the offensive rebound twice, and stick it back in. Blanchard loops it out on top for Johnson. Now it's McClure with 310 and the clock rolling in the third quarter. Spinning on top on the dribble, McClure. Free throw line extended left, Monahan give and go. Back down low on the block for McClure, or excuse me, Johnson. Jermaine Johnson nearly walked with it. Boy, that foot slid, 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 and uh, instead he got a tar up in the air, and it's number 12, a key foul, Andrew Warren. He just picked up his fourth personal. And as soon as he came in, he'll have to check right back out of the lineup. And low returns. Team third, they got it on the floor of the foul. No shots here. On the inbound, they get it left corner. Lavelle Blanchard, he's got five straight for Pioneer. Two at the line and one outside the arc, Mark. Uh, Mike, it's 47-38. You can tell this kid is a good shooter when he has no thoughts or fears whatsoever. When he's outside that three-point line, simply goes up, elevates, and extends that wrist and gets a beautiful shot off. Wilson across the lane, left side, driving, nice little running one-hander with a finger roll. Eddie Smith, points four and five this quarter, 11 double figures in the game. Pioneer having trouble inbounding, now they get it in. Monahan on the dribble, three on two, gonna take it all the way in with a finger roll in the field. Monahan with a deuce at the Pioneer offensive end and it's 49-40. Pioneer back by nine again, down low against the double team, a push as Edward Smith caught the interior pass. A bump and a Pioneer foul with 2.08 remaining in the third quarter. That'll be the sixth on Ann Arbor Pioneer, one more, and Denby will be able to shoot the bonus. And it goes against number 42, James Bridgewater, his second. Team sixth again. On Pioneer, trying to get it inbounded. Denby does that. Another substitution for Denby Tom back in. Number four, Rob Strickland. Down low on the block, Edward Smith, no, but the follow there for Robert Strickland. Put it in. In the backcourt, tip and a steal. Denby gets it back, driving, Monroe puts it up. No good, rebound, up and in for Edward Smith. Four straight and a deuce off the turnover of Pioneer and it's 49-44. The lead is five for Ann Arbor. Monahan gets it across the timeline. For a moment, there's a bump and a foul. Deron Franklin a little too close that time with his man-to-man -man defense and he'll be whistled for his second of the afternoon. And the team fourth on Detroit Denby. Substitutions at the scorer's table checking in for Ann Arbor Pioneer will be number 32, Garrett Quinn. Coming in for Detroit Denby is Brian Ellis. He will spell Deron Franklin, who is his older brother. And Bridgewater checks out for Pioneer. That last exchange that Mike mentioned. Inbounding, Monahan trying to take it to the hole again. Knocked and blocked away by Strickland, but loose on top, controlled by Jermaine Johnson. Down the lane, losing the handle. Garrett Quinn loose along the baseline. Pioneer turns it over and quickly Reuben Washington goes to his bench. He wants Deron Franklin right back in the lineup with a minute 17 left in the third. That is the 
eighth turnover of the second half and 14th of the game for Ann Arbor Pioneer. That can't be pleasing to head coach Brian Townsend. His team built a sizable lead, double figures here earlier this quarter, but now they see that lead cut to five. Throwing it away from the top to Ron Franklin. And at the four o'clock hour, let's tell you that you're listening to high school championship basketball on the sports fan, WVFN in East Lansing. Pioneer after the turnover by Denby. Blanchard on top. Boy, he lines up the three and connects. You cannot leave him that open. He'll burn you, and he did that time. Somebody has got to be watching Lavelle Blanchard all the time. Offensively, defensively, he needs a 5 o'clock shadow with him all the time. Otherwise, he'll burn you just like he did there. And there's a steal. Blanchard got the loose ball coming now for the one-hand tomahawk. Blanchard picking it up and laying it down at the other end. And the lead is 10 for Pioneer just like that. 54-44, half a minute to play. But down inside, right back at you, the Tars, Eddie Smith having a big quarter. He's got his ninth point in the third 15 for the game, 54-46. And now Pioneer into the front court wants to slow it up and perhaps get the final shot with 15 left in the third. Want to talk about up and down action in the paint. Boy, the little guy, Monroe, blocking the shot of Tobias. Loose ball into the hands of Pioneer. Missing the shot was Quinn across the timeline with two. Down low, one pass, too many. They didn't get it off. It's a good call. Lowe put it in off the glass, but they were late. After three of this Class A semifinal game, Ann Arbor Pioneer 54, Detroit Denby 46. One of your sponsors is Farm Bureau Insurance, and this is the MHSAA Championship Network on WVFN The Fan. Athletes, food is not your enemy. You need to eat. First, you need some calories just to remain alive. Then you need calories for daily activities, school chores, hanging out with friends. Finally, you need calories for practice and competition. Cut back on foods that are high in fat and low in vitamins and minerals. To power performance, choose most of your training foods from the five food groups, including three or four daily servings from the milk group. This message brought to you by the United Dairy Industry of Michigan, proud sponsor of the Michigan High School Athletic Association Sports Nutrition Award Program. Want to get in the best shape of your life? Then call 1-800-GO-GUARD. You can be stronger, faster, and healthier than ever before. Want to serve your community? Then call 1-800-GO-GUARD. You can be ready by training one weekend a month and two weeks a year. You got it! Keep going! Call 1-800-GO-GUARD. That's 1-800-GO-GUARD. The Army National Guard. You can. Sponsored by the Michigan National Guard. Aired by the Michigan Association of Broadcasters and this station. Maybe you didn't get a chance to see the games today at the Breslin Center. Not to worry, because you can catch all the highlights on the March Magic Recap at 1030 Thursday, Friday, and Saturday on WSYM Fox 47 in Lansing. Fans can follow their favorite boys basketball team and find out not only what happened today, but also what still lies ahead in the quest for the 1999 MHSAA Championship. So don't miss the March Magic Recap at 1030 tonight on WSYM Fox 47. Entering the fourth quarter, Ann Arbor Pioneer leading Detroit Denby 54-46, but a nice run there. 21-16, third quarter advantage for Denby, Mike. They're still in this ball game, down eight as we get set to hit the fourth. They're very much in this ball game, Tom, and if they hadn't let the ball slip away a couple of times, and if they hadn't given Laval Blanche that three-pointer, they'd be right in the heart of this game going into the fourth quarter. Still down by eight. There is a chance for them to win. They're going to have to play another good quarter like they just did in the third. Lavelle Blanchard, 28 points right now through three to lead all scores. Ten in the third quarter. Most of those in the final two, three minutes. When they finally, Pioneer decided to give me the basketball, and it's Ann Arbor's ball to enter the fourth. Handing in the front court. Kelvin Washington in to start this quarter. On the dribble, ran into his own player. On the deck now, loose and a whistle and a foul. Good hustle by Nathaniel Wilson. You can't fault the big man for trying to come up with a loose ball, but boy, he was a long way from home, the 6'6", 235-pound junior center. That is his third and team fifth now on the Tars from Detroit Denby. Opening seconds, fourth quarter, 748 remaining. In the fourth, Pioneer can't decide who wants to inbound. Finally, they start and away from the ball. If that's Wilson, he just picked up his second straight as 
Blanchard was trying to get free to get the inbound pass, and Blanchard and he collided. And it's Wilson who just got his fourth of the afternoon. And team six, so he's going to have to come out, I would think, Tom, with still plenty of time left on the clock, at least for a couple of minutes. Blanchard inbounding from the baseline. They work it on top for Jermaine Johnson. Top side right on the dribble, Kelvin Washington. Washington now against the man-to-man -man defense of Steve Monroe. On the weave, gives off. Running one-hander down the lane for Garrett Quinn. No, fight for the rebound won by Deron Franklin. He's going to dribble up into the front court himself. Dish right wing. Low, pull up, right block. No, tip up. That one won't count for Wilson. Defensive rebound, Pioneer way ahead. Bullet pass nicely. Johnson ahead for Garrett Quinn who puts it up and down. Credit Jermaine Johnson with a look up court and it's 56-46, Pioneer by 10. Left corner for three, short for Monroe. Tip up, offensive rebound for Edward Smith. A grab, a hold, a foul on Pioneer. I think it's going to be Garrett Quinn down in the paint area. I think it is too, Tom. That is the team seventh foul now on Pioneer. And it will go against Garrett Quinn, just his second. Into the lineup is Andrew Warren checking out Dewan Lowe. Denby, if you're a Denby fan, you've got to have these now from the free throw line here in the final quarter, down 10. I want to play catch up with Pioneer all afternoon. And the first one rattles home for Smith. He gets the bonus. And credit Edward Smith. He's had a strong second half at both ends of the floor, keeping his team in this ball game. He has indeed. Three of five from the free throw line for Denby in the third. They're now six of 13 from the game. Bridgewater in for the Pioneers. Kelvin Washington takes a seat. Get a bigger ball player out there right now. Pioneer, second one up and through for Edward Smith. Eight point Pioneer lead, 56-48. Inbounded against full court man-to-man -man pressure. Jermaine Johnson now picked up his dribble against the double team up the far sideline. Finds Bridgewater breaking down, missing two down low, the follow by Blanchard. Tipped out, long, controlled by Monahan. He has it knocked away into the hands of Steve Monroe. Back the other way comes Denby. Down, nice little uh, pass across the lane as Smith found Nathaniel Wilson. His first two of the fourth, he's got at least a point in every quarter, the big man for Denby. It's a six-point pioneer lead, four straight for the Tars, 56-50. Tom, these Tars are like the Frankenstein monster. They are not going to die. You can knock them down, they're going to keep coming right back at you. A miss driving to Lane Johnson, but there to follow for the jam is James Bridgewater. Oh, my goodness, he came out of nowhere to flush that one, 58-50. The other way. No contact, there was contact, no call by the official as Smith took a strong to the whole baseline left. And they tie up after the miss. Possession arrow gonna keep it with Detroit Denby as Wilson gonna check out with those four personals. And coming back in is number four, Rob Strickland with his three personals. And also checking in is number 23, Deron Franklin back to the lineup. Monroe gets a breather for Denby. Right wing spotting up for three, well short for Strickland. That had no chance, way ahead, one-handed dish for the jam for Blanchard. Boy, Quinn spotted him running the floor up the far sideline, and Blanchard made no mistake on that one. Four straight for Pioneer the other way, and it's 60 to 50, Ann Arbor, Pioneer by 10 again. 5.40 clock ticking to the fourth. Left of the lane, pull up, throwing it on top. Nobody there, tipped into the backcourt. It'll go out of bounds off Denby. Turnover, the Tars. How many more of those can they afford with 5.32 remaining in the fourth? They've cut them down dramatically here in the second half, but still, the ones that they gave up in the first half all resulted in points. And here comes your answer. Nathaniel Wilson back in with the four personals for Detroit Denby. A key moment of this ball game for the Denby team down 10 and playing defense. Looking, Monahan moved along the uh, sideline. You can't do that on a general inbound pass unless it's, unless it's after a made hoop and he's called for the out of bounds traveling turnover pioneer. Another turnover. That's 16 now in the game. Five and a half clock ticking here in the fourth. Denby gets it inbound. Monroe back in there, drives and dishes, but. The big man Blanchard swats the shot away and Eddie Smith and loose the other way. Uncontested with the easy lay-in. Brian Monahan, six and a half for him, nine in the game, and it's 62-50, Pioneer by a dozen. 
I would think that Ruben Washington might want to call a timeout here, Tom, with 5.06 on the clock. Calm the team down a little bit and set up something offensively. DeJuan Lowe driving through the lane, put a shot up, blocked by Blanchard, but late whistle. They also got Blanchard for a piece of him. That is his second. Two shots at the line coming up here. It's the team eighth on Pioneer. As Dewan Lowe heads to the stripe, the 6'1 junior guard, 5.02 left in the fourth. Ann Arbor Pioneer, 62, Detroit Denby, 50. First one off the mark, no good. He won't get to the back end. Rebound outlet nearly taken away after Bridgewater grabbed the board. So Lowe could not convert for Denby, and now Pioneer's in no hurry this trip. You would indeed think they would want to milk this clock a little bit, but passing down low to the cutting. Garrett Quinn was uh, Jermaine Johnson, but his pass well too high and out of bounds. Turnover Pioneer. And coming out of the Denby lineup, number 20, 55, Nathaniel Wilson. Uh, my mistake, New Wilson is still in. I thought I saw him move to the sideline. Right baseline on the drive, one-handed jam, no good for Monroe. Offensive rebound, stick back low in the lane with a leaner, and he got it. Good thing, because you don't want to miss a jam down a dozen at this stage of the ball game and not hear about it. It's a 20-second timeout for Detroit Denby, their first 20, 425 remaining. Fourth quarter, Ann Arbor Pioneers 62, Detroit Denby 52. Mathematically, the Denby team is still in the game, Tom. Unfortunately, they're not getting the breaks. They're not doing a good job of keeping hold of the ball either. See what they have to offer out of their own 20-second timeout. Good size crowd in attendance for this Class A doubleheader semifinal session. Coming up later this evening, the Class B games. Coldwater and Sheboygan in game one. Hastings, second straight year for them in the final four against the defending champion River Rouge team. And the game ball for the 1999 MHSAA Boys Basketball Finals is provided by Wilson Sporting Goods. The MHSAA would like to thank Wilson for its donation of the balls used at this year's semifinal and final ball games this weekend. Out of the 20 of Denby, Pioneer with the rock and up 10. Working the weave on top. Monahan and Quinn. Back pass behind him. Book it for Pioneer. And a Denby foul. What a dish by Garrett Quinn. Found the cutting Jermaine Johnson. Or excuse me, Tobias McClure. It counts the contact from Denby. He'll go to the stripe for the three-point attempt. Not only was it a good pass, but it was a good straight shot from McClure. He didn't take any extra steps. He was close enough. Straight up he went, got the bucket, and the contact. Boy, was that a thing of beauty. And Pioneers back up a dozen, 64-52. Foul the uh, team sixth on Denby. And here's McClure at the line. Tobias McClure. Free throw up and in. The lead is 13. Right where we were at halftime. 65-52 Ann Arbor Pioneer. That foul was called on Steve Monroe. That is his second. Leaning in the lane. Duran Franklin. His first two of the night. He's been a passer this evening. Now he gets his first two of the evening. Knocked away from behind. Then becomes up with a loose ball, shovel pass down low, short, hit the bottom of the iron from Monroe, loose out of bounds. And a grab and a foul coming up here. I think this is gonna go against Pioneer with 3.48 remaining in the fourth after they turned it over. Number 22, Brian Monahan with a grab. It's his second in team night. Substitution coming in for Pioneer. Number 42, James Bridgewater back in. Also coming in for Detroit Denby. Number 40, Christopher Gray, a 6'4 sophomore. McClure goes out for Ann Arbor Pioneer. Did a nice job, just had that three point, point uh, trip a moment ago. Missing the free throw. Now we got a whistle. Should have been a one and one. That should have been correct. Should they be Pioneers basketball, that's what the Pioneer coaching staff is saying. True, but the original call from the out official said it was a two-shot foul, so I think that's where the confusion came in because he held up and he said two-shot foul. Not sure how it could have been a two-shot foul. He was on the baseline, but now they're saying it was one-and-one -one opportunity. Monroe 
Misses the front end, Pioneer rebound, and now they'll inbound. So officials get together like they should and correct it. Pioneer breaking pressure up 11. Alley-oop, hanging on the rim, missing the uh, put up. No call there, Bridgewater. Blanchard gets tied up down low with Edward Smith. It's a foul coming up on Detroit Denby with 3.35 remaining as crashing the glass was Blanchard and he'll uh, head to the stripe after the foul on number 21. No, that was on Monroe, number 11, it's his third. Blanchard buries the first. And he's got a bonus situation coming for Blanchard, his third point of the quarter, giving 31 to lead all scores this afternoon. Out comes Gray for Denby, back in to Juan Lowe. And Blanchard bounces five, six times at the line. Eyes it, the right-hander sends it, and it rattles in. Blanchard gets both, 66-54. Timeout, a full one for Ann Arbor Pioneer. 3.35 remaining in the fourth. Pioneer, 67. Detroit Denby, 54. This is the MHSAA Championship Network on WVFN The Fan. The first rule of school sports is that students must earn the privilege of wearing their school's uniform by taking classes there. But some politicians in Lansing would like students enrolled at other schools to be on your school's teams, even though they are not enrolled at your school. Contact your local state representative or senator and let them know that your school's teams are for the kids attending your school, the kids who get their uniforms the old-fashioned way. They earn it. A message from the Michigan High School Athletic Association. It's not who you call after, it's who you call before that makes all the difference. Call your Farm Bureau insurance agent today and be ready for the future. Your Farm Bureau agent will help you with insurance protection for your life, home, auto, farm, business, and retirement. You can't predict the future, but you can make the future more predictable. Make that call to your Farm Bureau agent today. Farm Bureau Insurance, making your future more predictable. with engineer Jeff Hager, Tom Duke, Mike Stiles back at the Breslin Center here in East Lansing. Timeout, Ann Arbor, Pioneer. They have two full timeouts remaining and a comfortable advantage. Mike Stiles, 13 points, 67-54. Without a doubt, Tom, you think this game is well in hand for Ann Arbor, Pioneer, but like we saw in the third quarter, this Denby team has a way of coming back. Time now is against them with only 3.35 to go, but we've seen them put some quick points on the board. Let's watch and see what happens. Denby inbounds in their backcourt, pushing it up, left sideline on the dribble, Franklin. Left elbow, open there, Wilson, 15-footer, short, Lavelle Blanchard, the rebound, outlet, far sideline. For Brian Monahan into the front court on the dribble, bounce pass wide open, lane to the hole, Bridgewater, put it up, but walk with a basketball on his way to the hole. Turnover, Pioneer, that'll draw the Boo Birds out from the Pioneer faithful. 315 remaining in the fourth. Returning to the tar lineup is Andrew Warren, and Wilson will take a seat. They go from big to little with that exchange. Blanchard's been the workhorse down here. He's played almost 23 minutes of the game. Denby's got to do something about this deficit and quickly. Andrew Warren had the hot hand for a while back in the uh, first half, a couple of three-pointers, 10 points in the first half. He's got it left corner. Taking valuable seconds on top with a look. Steve Monroe, back iron, no good. Chase for the rebound, one offensive rebound. Edward Smith, but he threw it away, right into the hands of James Bridgewater. And now with 2.40 remaining in the fourth, Ann Arbor Pioneer with it back, tipped away in the backcourt, but to Jermaine Johnson got it back, and a reach-in call coming up here on Duran Franklin. That'll be the third on Franklin, team ninth. 237 remaining and to the line for one in the bonus. Jermaine Johnson. He's yet to hit the scoring column this evening in his first trip to the line this afternoon. Just doing up and in, but uh, no good a lane violation. Wave it off, turnover, Pioneer. Denby catches a break there. They remain down 13. Seeing their season begin to flash before their eyes. 19 turnovers now, Tom, for the Pioneers. Unfortunately, Demi's not been able to convert on many of those. Driving in, 
Franklin missed the shot. Rebound kicks out. And scooting down court on the dribble. Monahan got a shot block in transition by Andrew Warren. Back the other way, Denby. Crossover dribble, strong to the hole, up and in. It hung on that frying iron and fell through for Dewan Lowe. Got it to go. Denby gets a 20-second timeout with 2.09 remaining in this fourth quarter with Ann Arbor Pioneer leading by, should be 11, 66, 7.56. They haven't put the last two points for Denby up on the board yet. You're right, Tom. The Tars have two full timeouts remaining, as does Pioneer. Don't forget, coming up again later this afternoon, the Class B semis, you'll hear right here on the fan, WVFN, AM 730. Coldwater and Sheboygan and game one at 6 o'clock. And then 20, 25 minutes following that one, it's the defending champion, River Rouge Panthers taking on the team they beat in the Final Four last year, the Hastings Saxons up from the Grand Rapids area. Or down a little bit as the case may be. Pioneer inbounding out of the 22nd tar timeout. Finally put that deuce on the board for Detroit Denby. Pioneer with Garrett Quinn. Blanchard mid post left outside the lane. He doesn't want a shot right now, he wants clock. Time to come off that board. Working it around. Out on top, Blanchard, a minute 45 remaining. Guarded there closely, man to man by Edward Smith. On the weave, hands to Jermaine Johnson. Left hash, starts to get the uh, five seconds. So he moves with it to Blanchard, left side, on the curl on top now. Garrett Quinn and the Pioneer fans seeing those seconds come off the clock. We're down to a minute 20 left in the fourth. Cross court pass, keep away, near walk there, but. Jermaine Johnson, down low, Blanchard got free, lays it up and in. Six in the quarter. 16 and a half, 34 in the game. Right wing, no good for Warren. It's out of bounds along the baseline, last touch by Lavelle Blanchard with a minute five remaining. Pioneer by 13 again, 69-56. What an absolutely outstanding performance by Lavelle Blanchard, playing so well in this game today. Lowe checks out, Franklin back in for the Tars. Left wing, three-pointer, short for Steve Monroe. Stick back off the glass and in. Monroe followed his shot and gets the deuce, and Denby wants a timeout. 59.3 seconds remaining in the fourth. Ann Arbor Pioneer 69, Detroit Denby 58. This is the MHSAA Championship Network on WVFN The Fan. You can't predict what the future holds, but you can make your future more predictable. Just call your Farm Bureau insurance agent. Farm Bureau agents all over Michigan are helping families build college funds, lifetime retirement incomes, and more secure futures. Remember, it's not who you call after, it's who you call before that makes all the difference. Call your Farm Bureau insurance agent today. Farm Bureau insurance, making your future more predictable. A dehydrated body may affect your concentration, reaction time, strength, and endurance. Drink before you get thirsty. Drink at least one glass of water at each meal. Limit caffeinated beverages. Take a long drink every time you pass the water fountain. After practice and competition, milk and juice are good fluid and electrolyte replacement beverages. Feeling thirsty is not a good indicator of when a body needs to fill up, so think to drink. This message brought to you by the United Dairy Industry of Michigan, proud sponsor of the MHSAA Sports Nutrition Award Program. 59.3 seconds, the only thing separating Ann Arbor Pioneer from a date tomorrow afternoon in the Class A Championship game with Saginaw Arthur Hill. It's been quite an afternoon for the two big boys, Jason Richardson and now Lavelle Blanchard of Pioneer. Both of these guys showing why they are two of the best players in the state of Michigan. And at least in Richardson's case, where we know he's going next year to Michigan State, we haven't heard if Blanchard's moving on to play collegiate ball anywhere. He will be. It's just a matter of where. You know that. Pioneer breaking pressure into the front court now. They're working around. They got a fresh body or two out there, but throwing it away. Pioneer gives it up as uh, Ari Black, uh, Black into the lineup. Tosses it away. The other way in transition, knocked away from behind, out of bounds. It stays with the Tars. 44.4 left. 
Ann Arbor Pioneer will improve to 22 and four. Denby season's gonna come to an end at 18 and nine. Off balance, double clutch, deep left wing, no good. Stick back for Edward Smith after the Monroe misfire. That one won't go. Pioneer rebounds into the front court, spinning, turn and fire. Quinn, uh-uh. Tipped. Rebound. Controlled by Pioneer. They work it around. Baseline left. Ari Black put it up from 18. Off the iron, no good. Rebound. Eric Brown has it. The reserves in there. Three-pointer top of the key, no. Trying to save and doing a nice job that time was Franklin, but this pass deflected. Pioneer with four back the other way. Down, in and out, no good for Jermaine Johnson. But a foul with 1.9 seconds left in this one. Pioneer fans on their feet. That is a 10, so it's a two-shot situation. Moot point now with one and nine, 10 seconds left. Three of the championship games now are set. Class C, it'll be Detroit St. Martin de Porras against Bath. First one up and in for Jermaine Johnson. His first point this afternoon. Second one won't go, rebound for backup. No good by Ari Black. This one's in the book. A final in the second Class A semifinal game in Arbor Pioneer 70, Detroit Denby 58. One of your sponsors is the United Dairy Industry of Michigan, and this is the MHSAA Championship Network on WVFN The Fan. The Sports Nutrition Award program is now open to all 24 Michigan High School Athletic Association sponsored sports. The program encourages healthy eating as part of a training program. A winner will be selected for each of the 24 sports to receive a $1,000 grant to enhance the winning team's program. A $500 scholarship will be provided to a nominated athlete from each winning team. Improve athletic performance through good nutrition while competing in the award requirements. Talk to your coach and get your team to participate. This message brought to you by the MHSAA and United Dairy Industry of Michigan. It's not who you call after, it's who you call before that makes all the difference. Call your Farm Bureau insurance agent today and be ready for the future. Your Farm Bureau agent will help you with insurance protection for your life, home, auto, farm, business, and retirement. You can't predict the future, but you can make the future more predictable. Make that call to your Farm Bureau agent today. Farm Bureau Insurance, making your future more predictable. Want to get in the best shape? Go Guard. You can be stronger, faster, and healthier than ever before. Want to earn money for college? Then call 1-800-GO-GUARD. You can earn more than $21,000.